Your father can shout quick, quick, but because I'm not quick, I don't feel it. I will hear the word all right. I will hear the sound, but I will not feel anything. But you being the quick, quick, I won't ask, hey, can I wait? I think father is calling us. And then you call our attention for us to what? To go there. So you sitting here, you have God's image inside of you. You are two in one. You are spirit that nobody can see, the bara or the creator spirit, and this flesh that we see. Amen. So for you to hear God's word, what must you have first? His spirit. His spirit. That spirit is going to be like a mobile phone. Right now, you take your I, uh, iPhone, you dial one, two, three, four, five, six. Before I receive the call, your phone has connected to a mask somewhere for the mask to connect to me. But that connection, can you see with your eyes? You can't see. That's how God's spirit is. So for God to speak to you, for you to hear, you must have a spirit so that you connect with him. Amen. Amen. But back to Samuel's time, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit was not living in man like now. We are looking for Jesus' blood. But when man said, our grandfather Adam fell, God's spirit left him. Okay? So that para spirit that God made in Genesis chapter 1, it left Adam. So God said, the day you eat this fruit, you could die. But he ate and he lived for more than 100 years. Somebody said, that's why the Bible does not make sense. He doesn't understand. The moment God's spirit leaves you, you become a walking dead. Maybe far from us that you become walking dead. That when the spirit of God continues to dwell in you, you begin to experience God. Amen. Amen. So, for you to hear God's word, like I said, stay in tune with his spirit. The moment you let sin comes in your way, then you begin to separate yourself from God. A time will come, you begin to behave like those who have never heard God's word before. Why? Something has come in between your spirit and God's spirit. And God will speak and you will not even hear. Amen. Yeah. All what I'm saying, write the quotations down. So that when you go home, you take time and then you, you go through. In John 4, verse 24, Jesus said, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in truth and in spirit. So when God's spirit is in you, it identifies you to be God's child. Period. So if I say, Jeff, you see, he, even though he's playing somewhere, I say, Jeff, you will respond to me. Why? Because we share the same spirit. Samuel was in the temple sleeping. He said, Samuel, but because the spirit was not in him that time, he ran to and said, Hey, did you call me? He said, No, no, I didn't call you. Go back. That time, Jesus Christ had not yet come. So the Bible says, When the prophets of those days they pre they prophesied, the spirit came upon them. He used them to prophesy and he goes away. But in our dispensation, because of the magnificent blood of Jesus Christ, he purifies us from all unrighteousness. He makes us one with God again. And the Holy Spirit has now come and dwell in us. Amen. So we are lucky. Give Jesus a crown of faith. with God again. We were once alienated from God. But when Jesus Christ came to die, he brought us back again. So if you are here, you are now back with God again. So maintain God's spirit that is inside of you. So that when God speaks, you will hear. Amen. 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 Most of the times, you become so stubborn that your mother will say, sit here. You will not sit. You become so much that your mother or your parents can control you. I quite remember when I was young, I liked footballing, I would like to be in the goal. My mother said, if you go outside and play, by the time you come, there will be no food for you. But I will sneak out and go and be in the goal. I never listened. But one day, I had a football shot in my stomach, so hard I couldn't stand up. People had to come and wake me up. When I came, my mother said, what did you do? I couldn't even talk. My stomach was pain, so pain. And come and see me. <laughs> Since then, football became my worst enemy. I didn't listen to her oral words, but when I get a shock in my tummy, I begin to hear. We shouldn't wait for God's punishment to come before we begin to hear his voice. 
we must not begin to know that the Spirit is here within us. Amen. Amen. The second thing I want to ask you is, how can you recognize God's voice? Satan speaks, right? Yes. Sometimes you also talk with yourself in your mind. Hmm, this is I'm going to do, crowd. No, I'm not. You'll be talking with yourself. Mm-hmm. That yourself is not yourself, but the Spirit is you that is talking to you. Amen? Uh-huh. And God also speak. So how can you differentiate between these three? Who can try? Mm-hmm. Um, God uh, talks within you just once. He says this once. And Satan will repeat itself twice, sometimes three times to tell you that what you are doing is right. Maybe mm-hmm. if you are going to do, maybe I'm going to steal from this guy. Mm-hmm. And God will tell me, no. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Satan will tell me that I should go. Do it. Mm-hmm. Get the money. Take it. Mm-hmm. So you mean Satan's all is repetition. Yeah. But God doesn't repeat. Yeah, just one. Well tried, but not that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Clap for him. He's right. He's right. He's right. <laughs> How can you recognize God's voice? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Good. So when God gives you that spirit, you cannot differentiate. Good. What about if you don't have the same spirit, how would you know that God is speaking? Yes. One best answer. One best one. We've got some time. Uh-huh. We can try again. I'm teaching you, so feel free. Uh-huh. Try, try. How can you? Now, you are on the way going somewhere, and God is speaking to you. Will you ignore? But how would you know God is the one speaking? A good voice. So some voice are bad voice. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The only way you can know that this voice is God's voice is that it always goes hand in hand with this. That's the only way. That's the only way. Beginning, I said God speaks us in so many ways. If there are eight prominent ways that God speaks through us, the commonest and the easiest is the word. Understand? Because the Bible says, in the beginning was there, yeah. and the word was written, yeah. and the word was God. Yeah. So the more you read, the word you are reading who? God. Amen. Amen. So if God speaks, it always goes in line with his word. God will never say, do this. What in his word is there? No. He's the God who contradicts himself. He is a true and faithful God. So whatever that he has said, he will always do it. When you read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, All scripture is God breath, and is used for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training the righteousness, so that man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good way. The Bible you have in your hands, they are God's spirit. That has been inscribed on a pen and a paper that you and I will read every day. Be honest with yourself. How many of us read the Bible every day? If you read the Bible every day, oh, raise your hands. Every day. Not some days, so every day. God bless you, if you ask. So that means, God does not speak to us every day. The Bible says, Satan, your adversary, he stands before God day and night. Accusing you. And you don't have any way to defend yourself. He is speaking against you twice a day, day and night. And you don't do anything about it. No wonder we all are, we are always sick. No wonder we always have problems. No wonder we always have sleepless nights. No wonder we are always fighting and quarrel about things that are not necessary. Because we have abstained ourselves with a long distance between me and God. Then when he speaks, you can't hear. To hear God's voice, you must belong, belong to God, like I said in the beginning. If you don't belong to God, forget about it. Satan will be talking to you. So to belong to God, you must have his spirit. You must have God's DNA. If we take this little girl to the hospital right now and say, we're going to check the paternity test, we take the DNA, it's my DNA to be found. So when I say, Christabel, she'll respond to me. 
But when Elder says, Christabel, you will look somewhere else. But the DNA does not match. So to hear God's word, you must have God's spirit in you. Hallelujah. Amen. To hear his voice when we, we spend time in the Bible and study in the quiet contemplation time. Early in the morning, even if you test it, it's is enough. Take your Bible. Holy Spirit, I'm going to read God today. Help me to understand you. And when you begin to read, God will give you a river. The one you are reading, black or white, we call it Logos. Logos means written. But when you read, God will give you his own version back. We call it the river. So the more rivers you have in you, the more attentive you come to God's voice. You want to go and marry. The lady here. I have a question. Maybe you've seen a gentleman that you want to marry. What should be your first question you should ask him? Mm -hmm. You talk to me. Me? Yes, you. <laughs> what should be your first question you should ask him? I'll come back to you, man. <laughs> eh? <laughs> oh, so... Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> I want a woman, please. <laughs> Thank you. Are you a Christian? Are you ready? Uh -huh. So, Momo, if you take 100 women, and that's shockingly, 98 of them will say, Did you love me? And I want to be your question to the guy. Imagine you see me. What question you will ask me? You have to ask Sure. Anybody say I'm sure what <laughs> Hallelujah. The question that every woman, lady, should ask a man who wants to commit to you is, where are we going? Not the middle of me. Where are you going is a question of vision. When God made Adam, he made him first. Spiritually, he made them both at the same time. But when he made the body, he made Adam first. Right? Then he gave Adam all his commands and instructions. So when the woman came, say, Eve, my father God said this, 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 and that. So as a man, you must be able to teach your wife the word of God. So if that gentleman does not know where he's going, God's way, he's not ready yet. Amen. Yeah. But so do we. When he speaks, he speaks with God's word at home. When you offend him, you say, honey, what you did is not right. For the Bible says that he will instruct you according to how things are supposed to be done in the spirit. But as by so doing, your husband becomes God's man is in the house. But if we cast our mind back home, is that how we sit there in the house? That's why the wives are being crying every day because God's word is not being heard. But in our generation, it's my prayer that we will hear God's voice Amen. and then obey it. Amen. 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 While God could speak audibly to people today, He speaks primarily through His Word. Sometimes God's leading can come through the Holy Spirit, through our conscience, through circumstances, through exhortation of other people. One pastor that I know, you know, almost any time he sees me, he has something for me. And when I go home and I'm reading my Bible, it strikes me what the man said, he comes in. And through the things he tells me, I am now standing here preaching to you. Okay. So God can use people to come and then tell you his way. But the question is, are you ready to obey? Amen. Amen. Now, the second part is, why is obedience so important? He told Saul, the first king of Israel, Obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. But my question to be at the race today is, why is obedience so important to God? Who can give me one reason? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mama Dickness, you have a child. If your child does not obey you, what happens between the two of the relationship? You can't, you can't laugh, you can't flow. So that means disobedience brings about poor relationships. Amen. Amen. Another one who can try. Mm -hmm. The organist. Why is disobedience not good for you and your parents? Why? Um, it brings to disrespect to 
disrespectfulness. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I'm waiting for your answer. And there's no relationship. Somebody has said that one. Obedience to God preserves and proves our love for Him. First John chapter 5, verse 2. Obedience also demonstrates our faithfulness to Him. God says, don't steal. You hear, you obey, and you don't do it. It demonstrates that you are faithful to God. Amen? When God's children obey their Heavenly Father, He is glorified. You see, even if my mom tells me, oh, no, don't do this, don't drink, you know, smoking is very bad for you. I say, mom, because I love you, I will obey you. My mother feels happy. You understand? The same thing applies to us and God. Like I said in the beginning, God made you in his DNA. You are God's child. No doubt about that. So the moment you begin to obey him, he is glorified. Amen. Amen. Another thing is, when you obey God, he opens avenues for you. He opens chances for you. He opens up opportunities for you. For example, I have three kids in the house. And anytime I speak, Emmanuel, please sit down. He does it. Emmanuel, go to the garage. Mark the show mark. She obeys it. Emmanuel, even though it's cold, please go to the car and offload it. He obeys it. And I tell Jeff, Jeff, sit. <laughs> Jeff, it's after you come and stop it. Man, no, I'm And he begins to be disobedient. Imagine, and I have a biscuit in my hand. Which one would I give? See, how God is, that's how we are. That's why in the beginning I said, he made us in our own image. So the more you are obedient to God, the more he opens up avenues for you. Sometimes I, I, 